<laughs> hey guys, Kevin here from uh, Mix Smarter. Um, I'm going to show you guys today how to set up parallel compression in Pro Tools. Uh, what I got here is a drum set I recorded. Um, pretty basic kick, snare, toms, overheads. And you'd see parallel compression used a lot on drums. Uh, they'll use it on vocals, uh, bass. You could get creative with it, use it on whatever you want, experiment. But um, basically, parallel compression works by mixing a dry, unprocessed signal with a processed, heavily compressed signal to create um, an illusion of upward compression instead of downward compression. Right now, I just want to show you guys how to set this up in Pro Tools. Um, <clears throat> it's relatively simple if you know how to bust things. So, what I got here, here's all my drums. I'll play it. Okay, so there's my drums right there. So what you wanna do, is you're going to want to bus all these to its own um, aux track, creating a submix. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Create a um, create a stereo auxiliary track, and you can name it drums. And then in the comments, I'll put submix. And this is something that's very common. This is uh, you essentially bust all your drums to this one fader and you can control the level of the overall drum set with one single fader instead of having to adjust this one this one this one you know what I mean so once you get your level of each drum set you can then bust it to a drum submix and adjust the entire level of the kit it's a very common thing to do so once you got the sox track set up I don't know why but my Pro Tools default out output is uh, bus 1 2 so I'm gonna change that to built-in output 1 and 2 um, and what you want to do now is instead of typically where you create a send up here, you want to set the output right here. So you want to set the output of these drums to an ac actually to a bus. So I'm going to pick bus one, two, since it's not in use. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, hold down option and select bus one, two, and there we go. All of them are going to bus one two. That actually aside, if you have all these drums highlighted down here and you hold down option and select an output or input, it will select all of them as the same. So just a little tip. Um so now that we got this selected, we want our output on our drum submix not to be bus one two, but we want it to be our actual output. Okay, our our stereo output, our stereo mix. And we want to select our input as bus one two. So now we're busing. Actually, we're not we're not sending. We're outputting all these to a bus, and they are going to this drum submix track right now. So now you have this guy right here, which is your overall. Um, another thing you want to do, if you want to just solo this, you're not going to be able to hear it because you'd have to solo all these drums too. So I'm going to put all these drums on solo safe mode, and you do that by holding down command, clicking solo, click solo, click solo, solo, boom, boom. So now these are in solo safe, so if you solo this... Okay, so now we got all our drums being bussed to this submix here, which is a common thing you're going to do even if you're not using parallel compression, to be honest with you. It's it's a useful thing. It's just like grouping things, just a different way to do it. Um, okay, so once you got that set up, your next step is to create another stereo auxiliary track. Let's go stereo, auxiliary, and let's hit create. And I want to move this over to the other side. 
And I'm going to name this, uh, you can name it whatever, but I'm going to name it Drums Parallel. And I will put Compression in the comments. Okay, so now we got that set up. And unfortunately, my thing is defaulted to bus 1-2. So I'm going to do output 1-2 because we want it to go through the stereo mix as well. Um, so here's your dry, uncompressed drum signal right here in this track. This one we're going to use as our compressed signal. Okay? So here's the important steps. From right here on your original drums submix track, the dry track, you want to create a bus send. So I'm going to bus 3 4. I'm going to send it on bus 3 4, okay? And you want to keep this at Unity Gain. There's a, a very practical reason behind this, which I will explain in my next blog post. But keep that at Unity Gain. Okay, so and then now your input for your compression track right here, you want to make that input bus 3 and 4. Okay, so now this bus signal is going directly into this auxiliary track through bus 3 and 4 at Unity Gain. I'm thinking you guessed the next step. It's add a compressor to your compression channel. So let's just add the basic Pro Tools compressor to it. Okay. So now we have our drums submix channel, which is a stereo auxiliary track, which is our dry, unprocessed drums. And that's what the drums sound like. That's our drum submix right there. So if you solo this, this is basically, there's no compression applied to this. It's just a duplicate of this drum track. So it's really just going to sum together to the master bus, um, essentially making it 6 dB louder, the loud parts and the soft parts. So here's these together. And you can hear it. And the idea behind parallel compression is this drums the dry drum track will not be compressed so you'll get all the natural dynamics you'll get the natural dynamic range going through on this one okay so you'll get the loud transients and you'll get the soft parts on your compressed track you want to use extremely hard compression okay because you want to cut out all the loud you want to squash all the loud down only re only keeping the soft parts of the signal so to do that, you're essentially going to want to limit it, basically. So I'm going to set this very high ratio, high limit-like ratio. You see, we got this flat line here. So anything above this threshold is essentially not, it's cut off, OK? You want to drop your threshold down a bit. I mean, you want to you get a real, like, way down there. I mean, you just want to, the point is to get rid of the loudest parts of the dry drum signal okay you want to get rid of the loudest parts you don't want to use any makeup gain whatsoever because the makeup gain is essentially the summing of the two signals so the quieter parts that are actually going to get through which is anything on this side of the red line this straight line right here that's the quieter part of the dry signal that's going to go through it's going to eventually sum these two are going to sum together so it's going to go through on this track and it's going to sum with this one essentially they're going to sum together so your quieter signals are going to be 6 dB louder while your louder signals are essentially the same. Okay? So what you're essentially doing is upwardly compressing the signal. You are making the quieter parts louder and the louder parts are still just as loud. Um, okay? So we got some hardcore compression going on here. And I guess let's listen to it. See what it sounds like. Oh, yeah. You want to bring this fader down all the way and then bring it up gradually, adjust the taste.
Okay, so this is a quick, you know, run through. Um, to be honest with you, I'm experimenting with it myself, but I just thought I'd show you how to set it up since I know. But uh, that's that's basically it. So you, you're, these two faders are what you're going to be adjusting to get the sound that you want. Okay, because you already got your drum mix here. I mean, you can make adjustments if you need to. Um, but if you want more of the compressed signal, obviously you're going to bring this fader up or down. Less compressed signal, you could, you could bring this this fader down. You could also bring this down. So, I mean, it's give it's just giving you options. It's giving you mix options, okay? Instead of just throwing a, a compressor on the drum track. This might, it's also a smoother compressed sound. and It's just a different way of going about things. It's a nifty little... Uh, little technique that's actually quite commonly used um, a lot of people will add multiple parallel compressors to tonally shape sounds I mean that's getting way advanced but I mean I I like it I mean I'm gonna experiment with it some more it has its uses and it has its you know downfalls like any other technique but um, I don't know I think it I think it can be useful especially on drums when you want to keep that natural attack and the natural dynamic range of the sound but you want to make them just that much more punchy so that's it that's how you do it so um, I'll see you guys next time and uh, check out mixsmarter.blogspot.com for some more info take it easy okay.